Today is Sunday, March 24th. Oh. Tomorrow the vet's coming and uh, we're going to palpate about, I don't know, 70 to 80 heifers. Uh, so I'm headed to get them right now so I can sort them, or so we can sort them. Uh, yeah, so I'm headed to get them right now so we can sort them. Um, they're all right here, down by the feed troughs. So, Group 4 is going to be coming out pretty quick out of the feed lane. And they're going to be headed in the same direction. So I'm trying to beat Group 4. And then also snag these while they're here and they before they take off clear across the pasture. So, uh, uh, yeah. Just going to try to get them in. And uh, get them up to the barn. If this... I swear, I'm pretty sure one of them's out. Over there in the corner. Pretty sure she's in the, the land that we cleared last year, which that red grass right there looks pretty good, but then the dead spots and it's sopping wet. Anyway, it's something else. Ah. Yeah, they're starting to move at me. If my hollering works, which I realize uh, whistling is probably kind of annoying to listen to while you're watching the video, but. If it works, I'll go back up. I'll go back up the lane and cut on the other lane and come around behind them, and they won't even know. So uh, let's see if I can get them to come this way without having to really push them. Let's go! Bye, boy! Let's go! Bye! Might help if I'm not holding the camera while yelling. For your sake. Starting to move. Oh. Alright, now the trick is to move. We got them all standing up. Or, majority of them. There's being a little stubborn because they don't usually come this way. Uh, when I move them to switch grazing, it's on the other side of the creek, back over that way. And uh, so this way, they're just kind of they haven't they haven't come this way in uh, oh, probably four or five months, so they don't quite understand why they're coming this way yet. Moon. See that bull? He's trying to keep him back. That's one reason they might not be wanting to just take off. Him right there, where my finger is. So I got chalk on my finger. Uh, he's got to go. There's a bull in the back that's got to go. And I don't see the other one. I can't stand it when they freaking do that. It drives me nuts. What they're doing is they're trying to herd the heifers back to where they want them. So they run alongside of them and, and headbutt them and push them back. Uh, I mean, he's not doing a very good job right now because some of them are getting by. But pushing cows or something down the lane, you get one that stands in front and keeps them all from moving. 
And also, he's just beating the crap out of the heifers. I don't, I don't like that at all. Uh, as soon as they start doing that, they gotta go. Mine! Of course, he's getting a little bit too big anyway. All right, so we're gonna take off and go around this other lane up here. Hello? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're on the lane. Half of them are on the lane, so give me like a couple minutes to get them all in the lane. And then they, maybe they'll, uh, like two ships passing in the night, they won't even know. Yeah. Jason was supposed to close the gates when he came out to feed. Okay. Uh, I didn't close group one and I didn't close group two. Just give me like, give me like two, when you start seeing the heifers on top of the hill by 31, you can let them go. Okay, well, I mean, they're at the gate at 32 right now, so. Bye. Go ahead and cross the creek. Come in on that side. There should be another place for me to cross. Oh, over there. Go. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it in there or not, but that phone call I got, that was my younger brother. He's on the feed lane right now. Um, I checked for heat in group four. There was three cows to breed, and my dad was just getting started to breed them when I left to get these heifers in. So he's done breeding them. They already unlocked them. Uh, they just got to uh, clean up a little bit of feet, and then they uh, are ready to leave. But usually we open the gate and start letting them walk out. So what he was wanting to know is uh, if he can go ahead and unlock them, or go ahead and open the gate and let them out. Uh-oh. Because... Uh, um, we don't want, because I got to come down on the same lane and we don't want uh, Group 4 coming where I have the gate closed off and these heifers going by because it might create an excitement and uh, with them two passing each other and then some heifers dart underneath the fence or underneath the gate or some cows in Group 4 get un underneath the gate and they get mixed up and just cause more work. So trying to time it where get these heifers, cows start coming on their way and get these heifers in and they pass each other and they don't even know they did it. Uh, so that was just us trying to coordinate that. Well, we're all right here. If you don't want to go, you don't have to. You're staying. When that bull was born, he was red and white. And we kept him. And he turned black. He's got a little red on his spine and some red on his ears. That's all he's got left.
That's the other hog tracks. Little footprint there. I thought I had it ruined the whole thing there, but had a nice sandbar that I was driving in or on, following the cows, and it looked good. Uh, the last 10 feet to the gate wasn't, you know, sandbar disappeared. But I watched the cows walk through it, and uh, it didn't look deep. You know, it looked like it was four or five inches deep, and I tried to drive through there, and it looks worse than it is or was. I had to put it in reverse. So then that threw mud all over the place. But, yeah. Looks like now we have to go wash this for an hour. Your four was coming into here into 31. That stem right there. Well, them in heat. I don't know if that was one that got bread or not. Yeah, that one got bread. Anyway, so that couldn't work out any better. Let's group four standing there. Uh, they ran up here the last. 50 yards as the heifers went by. So we timed that perfect. It looked good until I drove in it. Said it looked okay until I drove there. It flies on him. Moon!
Uh, there was like 20 of them that wouldn't, uh, that were kind of like hung up back there and they wouldn't come. Yeah. And so I got across the creek and then started pushing them. And then uh, they were, it's like a sandbar. I was driving on it, wasn't even sinking. Yeah. And everything looked pretty good. And then they were sandbar in and it was like 10 feet to the, to like the lane part. Yeah. You know, the hard part, pack part. Yeah. And then, so I watched them walk across it and I mean, they sunk that much. I was like, oh, that's fine. I can get across that, yeah. you know? As soon as I drove on it, it just started sinking. And then it was like that slick, slime type mud. And then, uh, yeah. And then, so I stopped, you know, Ranger came to a stop and was spinning. And, but I was like, just like putt-putting. And then, so then I put it in reverse and then backed up. And then, and then it like sunk a couple more inches. I was like, oh crap. And then, uh, and then I was worried about group four. And then, you know, not getting heavers up here in the group four and all that stuff. So then, uh, so I just gunned it in reverse and it just threw mud everywhere. Uh -oh. Went back right out. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video.